So today we are packing up our kit bag, we're taking eye photography on the road and we're going on a photo walk. So what is a photo walk? Um, well, photo walks effectively are a really patient and peaceful way of you being able to learn a bit more about your camera in kind of slightly more secluded environments or doing it at your own leisure. Now with our photo walk, we're not going out with any agenda or a specific direction or expectations. It's really just a chance for us to challenge ourselves effectively to how to use our camera just in any given spontaneous moment. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to do today with your camera, if you're stuck for a bit of motivation or you're hitting a bit of creative block, then this could be a really good game for you to play. Now you can go it alone if you want, or if you've got a friend who's interested in photography or just likes to go out for a walk, then team up and it's, it's good to kind of have a little bit of kind of camaraderie as you go on these walks. So all we're going to take with us in terms of equipment is just our camera. It's just going to be a simple little mirrorless camera with a standard kit lens. Um, we're not going to allow ourselves any extra lighting or flashes. I think we'll probably bring a tripod along just in case because we want to kind of make sure we get the best quality. Um, but in terms of other props, we're only going to allow ourselves to use anything that we actually find at our location. So where are we going to go? Well, all I've done is basically pull up a map on my phone and it's effectively just a case of closing your eyes and putting your finger on the map, not even looking, not cheating. And then we kind of save our location. Brilliant. Away we go. location now we've actually ended up um, near a bit of a, a kind of common walking path when we selected on our map I think when we actually did select on our map we ended up in the middle of a field that wasn't really that accessible so we had to be a bit practical and really really close by actually we were very fortunate to land near a, a bit of a walking path um, around our area so all we're going to do is say we've got our camera got our tripod and it's just really a case of now having a bit of a wander around and and looking out for for all the kind of the natural elements that we've got looking at different textures and just really seeing what kind of stands out to us but we'll discuss a little bit more of it as we go so one of the first little things i spotted was this tree over here i really like the way it's it's kind of quite clear against the backdrop of the dark clouds and I quite like looking for contrasting elements like that it does really work very very well in nature and especially in black and white photographs so just for a minute I'm just going to try just a couple of shots it is kind of fairly bright out here today and the, the clouds are moving around a lot so the light is changing kind of quite often so I'm still working on a manual setting shutter speed around 200th of a second but it's the aperture that I'm most concerned about um, so, because obviously the change in light, but we're going to work around about f8 for the minute and an ISO of 160th. I'm going to zoom closer in because I can't get that close to it as we stand. I may just try a couple more at a slightly wider aperture. So I'm trying to kind of keep the tree on that right hand side third and then the horizon just runs across the bottom there. But I'm always a big believer in, in trying your composition two ways around landscape and portrait again it just gives you the options when you come to editing a little bit later on but that's a good start I think we'll uh, we'll move on the one thing not to forget it's just almost reminded me to, to tell you is not to stop looking behind yourself as you're walking and obviously the natural thing is always to watch where you're going but have a look behind you every now and again because as you can see just behind me we've got this lovely lovely landscape that's just appeared as we've come up the path so we've got this higher viewing point and it's got this fantastic kind of clear path this gives us a nice leading line but also in the background you can possibly see these these hills that are kind of merging in together creating these verging lines that, that, that are coming together I think it actually makes quite a strong landscape. It's also worth maybe getting down a little bit lower and changing your position every now and again. Shooting from the same eye level all the while 
it's okay, but you're not necessarily going to find something creative every time with that shot. You've got to move yourselves around either by getting a little bit higher, but naturally just crouching down or giving the simplest option. And in this instance, it gives them some nice kind of leading lines. It creates this path as a leading line into the shot. It kind of waves around towards the landscape in the background. So really, really simple, but like I said, never stop looking behind yourself. I've stopped at this tree just for a minute as I was walking up the path because the one thing I really, really like to see is, is texture. And that's obviously something that's an abundance in nature, but I think there's quite a nice yeah, opportunity to kind of exploit a little shot, getting all this wood texture into a shot, but a really, really close up, not any of the surroundings, but a dead, dead close up shot. So to help with that, I'm gonna keep the aperture fairly small, round about F, F8, F11, um, just so it helps us retain that detail. And also because of the way the light's dappled and falling on it, you'll see it's changing. We're gonna get some lighter areas, some shadows. So we'll just see how the contrast works out. So we're just gonna try a few really light, low angle shots looking straight up the tree and just try and see if we can kind of emphasize that texture a little bit more. So the important thing to remember whilst you're doing this is that you don't always need a, a particular camera like a DSLR or anything fancy. You can do this with your mobile phone. You can even get smartphone apps just to maybe give you a little bit more control. They're getting better and better these days, so don't think it's automatically something you have to do with a specific phone. Right, so I've just stopped just for a couple of seconds whilst there's a bit of a lull in the wind to be able to tell you that I, I've seen a composition that I think could work quite nicely in using this gate and then the, uh, the fence that's running downwards towards the landscape. So I'm hoping to kind of cut across the two so we get a nice composition of a leading line towards the camera, towards that, the, the, the closest point here. And obviously the rest of the composition leads out to the landscape. Okay, so I've set up my composition at least. I'm just going to tweak the settings a little bit. Um, but just firstly with the composition, you can possibly see from the back of the camera, I've just lined the horizon just to sit on that top third there. And then I've made sure I've also got that kind of fence post leaning right into the middle of the shot. I may just tweak it a little bit. This could actually be kind of quite nice as a black and white possibly. But again, it's just all about spotting opportunities and just trying something out. There's, there's nobody rushing you or making you kind of hurry up a little bit. You've just got time and a, and a bit of peace as well, which is quite nice. So just pop that to the side for a minute and uh, just shoot, well, possibly uh, in a portrait orientation right next to the fence here and down the barbed wire, all the way down there. Again, it's a leading line, whether it's leading you towards a landscape or towards a person, leading lines are such a brilliant kind of compositional tool. So I'm just going to crouch in a little bit further. It's just a nice, simple, little quick shot and you're always, especially out in the countryside, you're guaranteed to see, guaranteed to see uh, some form of fences or, or kind of walls in a way. So you can use them to your kind of uh, compositional advantage, but yeah, dead simple.
So there we go. We're finished with our photo walk. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a really good experiment for us to try out different things spontaneously and only being able to use what's around you. Um, hopefully it's inspired you a little bit to get outside and give it a go yourself. And if you have, let us know. Just drop a comment in the descriptions below. Just tell us what you found, if you found any problems, any limitations, and obviously send us your pictures as well. We're all over Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Pinterest. You can find the iPhotography course there. Just send us a message, send us your pictures. Obviously, if you want to find out a little bit more about iPhotography, hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, and we will see you in the next episode.